Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here. In this video, I'm going to teach you a way to factor any quadratic. You might look at the list of those five things and recognize there's actually some that have special cases, but this is going to work always. So if you ever forget the special cases, you can always revert back to this method. So let's look at the first question, and then what we're going to do here is going to work for all of the other cases. The fifth one hasn't been included yet, but we'll include that later on. What we're always trying to do is we're always trying to find two numbers that add to the middle term, the coefficient of the middle term more specifically, and they multiply to the first term times the last term. So 2 times 7 here is 14. And then what we need to do, and you can do these in your head often as you get the hang of it, we're looking for factors of 14 that add to 15. So let's see. Factors of 14. We have 1 and 14. Well, that adds to 15. So that's the right one. But you could also list 2 and 7. We could list negative 1 and negative 14. And we could list negative 2 and negative 7. Those would all multiply to 14. But in these cases, you can see what they add to are not positive 15. And so what we want is 1 and 14. What we're going to do now is we're going to decompose this term into two terms. We can always break something down and keep it the same, but just represent it with two terms. So this is going to become 2x squared plus we had 1x plus 14x plus 7. It's still 15x in the middle. The reason we're doing that is we're going to do something called factor by grouping. It's helpful sometimes to draw a dotted line after the second term and then take a common factor out of the first two terms. Well, they both have an x in them. We could take an x out of both of those. If I divide both by x, I'm left with 2x plus 1 left over. Then what I have is I could common factor a 7 out of 14 and 7, and I'm left with 2x plus 1. The key is to factor out enough so that what we get in those two brackets is exactly the same. And that's what works, that's why breaking up into two terms and then common factoring it works is because I get the same thing twice. Now that's the same thing as writing x plus 7 times 2x plus 1. If you don't believe me, go back and think, well, what would happen if you expanded out x plus 7 times 2x plus 1? Well, the whole principle of expanding is taking the first term and multiply it by every term in the other set of brackets. So x times 2x plus 1. That would get us the first half of the line above. And then we go 7 times all the terms in the other set of brackets. So 7 times 2x plus 1, which gets us the second half of the line above. So if you're ever wondering, did I factor it properly? Think about expanding. Expanding is the opposite order of factoring, and that would take us back to the previous line. So that's what you do. When you get that 2x plus 1 twice, you then write what's in front of the brackets in one set of brackets, and then the 2x plus 1 only once, because both of those terms are being multiplied by 2x plus 1, both the x and the 7. So that's how it works. So let's do this now for the other ones. This next one, we have two numbers that add to 6, multiply to 8. So we list factors of 8. Factors of 8. We could do... 1 and 8, well, that would give us 9. That's not going to work. We could do 2 and 4. That would give us 6. That's going to work. Those are going to be our factors. We could do negative 1 and negative 8. We don't need to list them now that we've figured out what we are going to have work. But I'm just listing them all for your benefit so you can see what you'd do if you were stuck and you hadn't gotten them yet. So 2 and 4 are what we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go break that middle term down. We're going to decompose it into two terms, x squared plus... 2x plus 4x plus 8, and then I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to take a common factor to the first two terms, which is x. Again, it won't always be x, but it has been for the last two examples. And then we're left with x plus 2. Divide both the terms by x. And then I'm going to take a common factor out of the next two, which is 4. And I'm going to be left with x plus 2 again. Remember, if I don't take a big enough factor, I'm not going to have the same thing in the two brackets, and they need to be the same. If you'd only factored a 2 out, you would have gotten 2x plus 4, which would not have matched the other bracket. So that's why we had to take the whole factor of 4 out. Now that we have the same thing in the two sets of brackets, I get x plus 4 times 2 times x plus 2, and I'm done. I factored it. 
Now I want to point out something here for, this is called a simple trinomial, and that's because the number in front of the x squared is 1. What do you notice about the factors here, the 2 and the 4, and the answer? Well, they're the same, aren't they? This will always work out with a simple trinomial. So you don't actually need to decompose a simple trinomial because the factors that you get are always going to be the answers. You can see over here that it's not the same when you have a number that's not 1 in front of the x squared term. So we had to decompose this first example. But the second example, we don't have to decompose it. You can jump right to the answer because those factors are the actual things that we put in brackets. All right. With that in mind, here are two special cases. Now, this one is actually called a perfect square, number three. And a later video, I'll show you how that works and how to factor that. But I'm showing you how this one method works all the time. And so we're going to do it without using the perfect square this time. But that would be what you try to use for that if you recognized it. This other one is called a difference of squares, a difference of squares. And again, that's a special way we could use to factor it. But I'm going to show you how to use this method we've used exactly the same way for these. So let's dig in. So this next one, 4x squared plus 20x plus 25, two numbers that add to 20 multiply to 4 times 25, which is 100. Then we have to list the factors of 100. Now you could be here a little while because there are a lot of factors of 100. 1 and 100, 2 and 50, uh, 4 and 25, and you could keep going. You could go 5 and 20, and you can do 10 and 10, and you can see when you add all those up that the 10 and 10 adds to 20. So those are the factors we're going to go, because we can also list the negative factors, because a negative times a negative would be a positive. So there's really a whole ton of factors here. But as soon as you have the ones that you need, you can move along with it. You don't have to literally list all the factors. Here we know it's 10 and 10, so let's go ahead and decompose that middle term. 4x squared plus 10x plus 10x, plus 25. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We're going to take a common factor of the first two terms, a common factor of the last two terms. Common factor of the first two terms is now 2 times x. That's a big 2. 2 times x. If I divide 4x squared by that, 4 divided by 2 gives you 2, and the x squared divided by x gives you x. And then 10x divided by 2x, you're just left with 5. So let's see if we can take a factor out of the next two that leaves us with 2x plus 5 in the brackets. So if I take out a factor of 5, 10 divided by 5 is 2x, 10x divided by 5 is 2x, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. And lo and behold, we have the same thing in the brackets. And so we can write this as 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. Now that can also be written as 2x plus 5 squared. We have the same factor twice. And that's one of the reasons this is called a perfect square that I'll look into in a different video. But what about number four? I noted that it was a difference of squares, but how does that actually apply if we use this method? Well, we can't find two numbers that add to a middle term because it doesn't appear like there is a middle term. But there is. Anytime we don't have something represented, an x term in this case, we can add 0 times x. So that's the same thing as what's above. So here I'm trying to find two things that add to 0 and multiply to 16 times negative 9. That gives me negative 144. So what that means is we have to find factors of negative 144. That's going to take a little while. Obviously we could list 1 and negative 144, etc. The trick is if you ever have two things that have to add to 0 and multiply to a number, it's going to be the square root of that positive number. The square root of 144 is 12. And so the factors we need here are positive 12 and negative 12 because those add to 0. Anything else will not add to 0. So let's go ahead and let's decompose this into 16x squared plus 12x minus 12x minus 9. Notice that still adds to 0x. So that term is still 0 in the middle. We haven't changed the expression. So now we're going to factor by grouping. 16 and 12, we can divide a 4 out of both of those. And we can also take an x out. And we're left with 4x plus 3. Here I've got two negatives, so I'm going to common factor a negative 3 out. 
and I'm going to be left with 4x, and it's going to be a plus 3, because if you multiply the negative 3 back in times positive 3, you get the negative 9 back again. And so what we're left with is a 4x minus 3 times 4x plus 3. And you can see there that it's a difference of squares because 16 and 9 were both perfect squares, and it's a minus sign being a difference. And so, again, in a later video, I'll show you how to actually do a shortcut for difference of squares. But with this method, it works just as well. Let's have a look at the final example I showed you at the beginning of this video. So here it is, 8x squared minus 80x minus 88. We need two numbers. It would appear that add to negative 80 and multiply to 8 times negative 88. I'm not even writing down that number because it's such a big number. You could obviously do it in your calculator figure it out pretty quickly. But that's a pretty big number. So here's the last trick I'm going to show you in this video. The trick is common factoring. If we can common factor, it makes our life so much easier. Common factoring. So let's see how to do that. I can divide all of these terms by 8. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 8 times x squared minus 10x minus 11. And so scrap this idea of trying to find factors of 8 and negative 88. Let's get rid of that. And now we're trying to find just what's in the brackets. The two numbers have to add to negative 10 and multiply to negative 11. So what we need to do is we need to list factors of negative 11. What are the factors of negative 11? Well, there's 1 and 11. One of them has to be negative. The bigger one has to be negative because it has to add to negative 10. The other factor would be negative 1 and 11, and that would add to positive 10. So our factors are 1 and negative 11. Now think back to the second example we did in the video. I showed you that if the trinomial started with a 1 in front of the x squared term, then we could simply factor that in one step. We didn't have to decompose it, break it down. You could, that would work, but those numbers, 1 and negative 11, are the numbers that are going to be in the brackets. So we're going to have 8 times x plus 1, x minus 11. If you need to, go ahead and decompose the negative 10 into positive 1x and negative 11x. Factor by grouping the first two terms in the brackets, the last set of two terms in the brackets, and you're going to eventually arrive at the same thing. So there you go. That's the process of it. The whole idea, just to reiterate and review, is to find two numbers that add to the middle term, but only after we've common factored, two numbers that add to the middle term, and multiply to the first term times the last term, specifically the coefficients. Then we go ahead and we break that middle term into the two factors, and then we go ahead and factor by grouping, and then finally writing it out in brackets like we did here. Hope that was helpful. Please comment in the below if you found that helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much.